Hey guys, this is a very special feature. Uh, we have conversations with Finoche, Izzy and Rango who are creatives who work with us during the creation of the label Human Song and Music Video. We recorded this in May, the behind the scenes process, the making of the video itself and we can't wait to share it with you. We really hope you enjoy this and hope that you get to feel the energy that took over 50 creatives to make this beautiful piece of work, a one-shot music video um, done at 209 State House Road. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have uh, three key participants of, of the label Human Music Video. Well, finish a, um, we're going to play the the music video at the end. I'm going to share my screen with you as well because uh, we've been we've been dying to show you actually. Hey man, <laughs> yeah, can't wait. So first of all, guys, if I could get just a quick intro from each of you about uh, who you are and how you took part in the project. Okay, I'll start. Right. So my name is Finoche. Elba Meso, that's my real name. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a student of international relation and uh, self-taught music producer and hip hop artist. So I was the guy producing the label. It's actually one of my biggest projects this year because like, I took time perfecting the whole, like you know, mixing the vocals, mastering them and all that. So it's a big project to me, personally to me, because I took a lot of time and I uh, concentrated on the track so much so it's something huge to me um my name is rango i always put the m at the end for <laughs> my actual name my two last names so uh i'm a video creator based in nairobi kenya um i actually came into this project as by coincidence because I, I i met adrian <laughs> at um, uh, where, where I went, where the event was actually going on. I walk around that place, so he, he pitched the idea to me. I told him I liked it and I, I would be actually glad to be a part of it. And so far, so good. <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, I'm easy. Um, I'm basically uh, a visual artist i like to simplify it that way uh yeah but basically i do photography uh i create videos and animations and uh, digital art so i came into the project uh, as uh, an animator which also was kind of uh, it was kind of uh, uh not a, a planned thing per se, more like Rango's story, where, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where I, I, you know, I met up with first the NITMU and then she introduced me to Adrian and then we had like a meeting, the three of us, and then in the process of that, that you know, they told me about uh, uh, what was going on and, and Nairobi Design Week. They asked me if I could be a part of it, and I was like, "Yeah, this is a nice project that I, I would, I would, I would like to be a part of." Yeah. Thank you, guys. Most of these meetings, the creative meetings, are spontaneous, and, and that's how it happens. And I can say that we we've definitely been looking for the right individuals in in every kind of creative yeah. aspect to be able to form these teams, get people collaborating together speak the same language and get, get uh, the, the output that we're all after. Let's start with the song because that was at the beginning. We kind of, we could say the creative process was mainly a sprint during that week of Nairobi Design Week. And then obviously there were refinements that, that happened afterwards. So how did the process of production for the song start in a show? So we started making the beats at uh, MGM Studios. Jeff and Bandana had the whole idea of the song. So at first I can say it was a bit challenging because <laughs> I don't know how to use logic. 
<laughs> I usually use Impel Studio to make my beats, but I really enjoyed. I can say just I really I can say I really enjoyed the whole process. That's what I can say. The experience was good, you know, interacting with the new artists, Cliff and Bandana, Sogalo, Caleb, and um, also Bakita. So it was more just a project. I um I I I got a chance to know the artist as well, interacted with them, and uh, I can say all I can say it was it was an amazing thing. <laughs> you know yeah and it was also a different genre of what i usually do i usually do jazz hip hop so so yeah it was something great <laughs> experiencing a new genre and uh, yeah did your approach differ then if you're uh creating a piece of music in a genre that you're not used to what did you have to do differently um i had to listen to the reference the references that you give me the like the, the the one you're telling me about the percussions and all that i forgot it its name <laughs> so i used to listen to that music and uh, i was just vibing with what you people were telling me and i used to wake up early exactly at 5 i had to put work in and like before coming to the nairobi design week i used to wake up and like peruse the instrumentals the vocals and all that have you worked with multiple instrumental musicians and vocalists before in one track no no i haven't so it was it was my first time and it was challenging then we also yeah wanted to have a couple of versions of the track right so yeah. what did you do at the end of the track to extend it so what he did uh, the the single version is 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 3 minutes the extended version i think it's 5 5 to oh it's 6 minutes so what i did the single version will be the one which people will be streaming maybe to the digital platforms like spotify tidal deezer and the extended version will be the one which is going to be used in the videos just to note here that we actually ended up uh, releasing the extended version on streaming platforms such as Spotify. We thought there was so much goodness in the last 2 minutes of the track such as the violins and the, the chorus etc that we wanted everyone to hear it not just the people watching the video on YouTube. And at the end of the video people will be maybe showing what they've been able, you know, like you are going to make it a more interactive video uh, that's why i extended the the part from 3 minutes to 5 minutes i i think rango rango is aware of that even you the extended version where people are going to like you know dance and doing all that stuff you know showing the oh even animations like easy 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 can maybe come up with animations of people showing what they been labeled so actually yeah maybe rango you can tell us how you interacted Uh, with us throughout the the process and how oh, how uh, you are involved uh, throughout the week and the shooting so for the for for, for the video when um, we we were to do it <laughs> uh, initially there was supposed to be just one track and the first track i think was went to like five five minutes or so um, and then it was supposed to have um, it was just supposed to be the one take no added things no added elements to it but then it happened that on the day of the shoot because of corona we couldn't have many people on on set because it was the first game where we were, were in Kenya we, we had a lot of people to stay home people to stay it was the first first weekend of that so people couldn't come to the event that's why when you see the video it's, it's quite good yes but um on that day we were expecting a lot of people because it was one on a weekend and um, it was the last like the last day of the event so there was supposed to be quite a number of people but since um corona and all that came about we had to do with what we had and so to in order to make it work with the We, we, with the tags and stuff 
all over the video we we sort of decided to extend the, the song into another like a minute or so of just instrumental and stuff so that on the end frame we can have different people around the court holding up boards of um, like the tags they've been they've been labeled and so um, that was kind of it for in idea wise because the video was supposed to be one take and on that day I remember me and Adrian were consulting and we were like should we really do it continue and do it as a one take because there's there wasn't enough people per se and um, and uh, we, we, were, we, we thought maybe to try and do it like a normal video like we take different places of the event and shoot the artist there and then edit it like a normal video make it just look flashy poppy and stuff then we just decided since we've been working towards this for the whole week let's just do it the way we can and then we'll see what we can add to it later on and that's where the idea for the animation and stuff came about because there wasn't crowds of people as we expected and so we thought in order to make it look a bit nice and and popish we can add some animations to each and every frame that can can have something like the scribble effects and stuff all across the video and yeah that was kind of the, the process video wise thanks Ranga. um we had a lot of fun with it yeah we had a lot of fun with uh with the video and what what were your thoughts when we first said one shot music video oh <laughs> um the first when when you said first shot i was like uh will this really work with what we have here because you know i'm actually used to that space quite a lot because i'm always there each and every day and it's always when when you're used to seeing something you can't see you don't quite see it in a in a creative way as other people who come outside um, from that place will will look at it and be like oh this can work this can work because that was my everyday i was just always around that place every single day my sunday to sunday because we creatives you know how we are we just stay at a place so when you told me that and the first day when i started seeing the possibility of it looking quite nice was when in the middle of the week when things was starting to build up in terms of the artworks that were being done around there the projects like building the court the the wall, graffiti wall the the lights you guys set uh, around the place and uh, the benches and stuff so because there was activity throughout the week i, I started seeing a possibility and, and then I, i remember talking to you and saying can we involve the crowds of people who will be here in the last day and you were like ah oh, yeah yeah that's actually the whole idea and then i was like oh this will actually work because, um for a one take video and everyone who was come there I'm, i'm guessing will be artsy in a way because it's design week so i i i in a way i was kind of the first time i was kind of ish ish with it because i was like will it work or will it not work and how will it look because my eye was sort of used to that area but then after a while when well, during the week because they the event actually took the whole week around wednesday thursday that's when i started seeing things in a different way and being like uh, that can work if you go maybe like this and this and then the day when um, the choreographer came money when money came on board that day and we did like a run through with him looking at how things are and um where maybe the dancers can pass where people can nothers going out and um, sort of we were trying to work out if there's a crowd here of people we're just looking at that because there there's a part where just before we reached to the restaurant uh there were supposed to be vendors there right so we were like yeah, if there's vendors here and then we can just have people coming in okay. maybe we having okay. um different kind of clothes and stuff um, from the vendors and stuff just mixing around with other guys and then after we get from the restaurant going down all these people can just go in between the vendors go all the way to the other side and then meet everyone down there you see so that that was kind of the point where i was like comfortable doing it as a one yeah i i think it, in hindsight where 
um, the crowd we had anyway, when you look at the video, is quite a lot of people. So if we'd had vendors and stalls and everything else going, that would have been hectic, to say the least. That would have been um, hectic and, and also quite, quite, um, quite nice looking for the video because it would of be course. a big, big crowd, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, part of what we want to do is encourage people to make their own videos with the track, right? To, to do different environments and see where, where humans are. So uh, another thing you mentioned about, yeah, about Corona it was th it's so lucky that we literally did it on the last day that it probably would have been feasible for us to do it. You know, we already had to cancel the event. We'd already been taking the precautions with sanitizer and everything all week and then uh, unfortunately well or well, fortunately we were the probably you know one of the last events that got to go ahead um because if it had been a, a week later we couldn't have. yeah so, yeah 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 so um izzy how how uh, were you involved within the process of creating it well uh for me first let me say um uh, this this uh, this is my I would say this is my first uh, like uh, major uh, animation project that I have done. Uh, initially, the, the 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 animations that I've done have just been uh, either personal project or collaborative work, but there's no. And, and not collaborative in this way, like in, a, in just a small way. So like this, this was um, the first project for me where there were many people who I involved. Uh, and also the project was big uh, in the sense that, um, you know, the message that the video was carrying and uh, the essence of the project itself so first it was i would say for me it was a, it was a very good learning experience because uh i told you at first i had issues with i had software issues and 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 the only reason the problem was was uh, the machine that i was working with uh was just not able to handle processing some some things so i was really having issues so i was just trying to figure out how do i because i knew what i wanted to achieve and from the brief that you had given me i knew what was being looked for but then it was such a challenge achieving that because of the challenges i was having uh with my machine so i was learning in the process i was trying to figure out like just other ways i can i can really figure this this thing out because i wanted to ensure that um you know at the end of the day uh i'm able to you know just achieve what what needs to be achieved so as i was editing and, and anyone who has done animations knows that uh probably you and and rango know that it's 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 a tedious process because you're working with friends and so it's basically animating frame by frame uh so if 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 already you're having a challenge you know with other things in terms of software then it becomes quite something but uh, yeah in the process i was just on youtube trying to look for solutions uh at some point i even wrote to uh i even wrote to uh, guys uh, at adobe just to to seek um uh, to seek tutorialship on maybe uh, maybe there's something else that I can try out that I haven't tried out. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, I ended up figuring it out. Uh, yeah, but it, regardless of that, it was still a fun project for me to do. I I had a lot of fun. Let me say I had so much fun doing it uh, because of the fact that every single day I could see that there was something that I had done that there was i had moved a step closer than i was yesterday so it was fun it was really fun it was the first time i've never done uh i've never animated a music video so this was the first one so it was it was fun I, it, it's something that i was really looking forward to doing and also shout out to rawson as well uh 
who who contributed the other side of the animations and he's not on the call but Rango maybe you can uh, tell us about Rawson. Uh, me and Rawson actually we were in animation school together and before that we were actually in high school together so when actually we were going um, about doing the the animations and stuff I remember you asking me the first time before we we you, you, we put easy on board. You were like, do you know an animator? Because none of us actually at the time were thinking of animators. And I, when I told you about the idea of putting scribbles all around the video, you told me, uh, can you, do you know someone who can do it? I told you at the moment, no, but then you remember the easy. So we put easy on board. Easy was doing it for us and it was quite nice actually. It was, um, it was actually good seeing how it's coming about, but because of the workload, I, I remember wanting to ask him for Rawson to maybe try and do something for me and see if we can mash up the two animations from the two guys and see how that would work. And um, I think it actually works quite well because it's hard for you to know who did what part and who did which part unless you know each of the artists personally. Like if you know Easy, you'll know his work, you'll see like easy did this and this and this and if you know Rawson you know that he did this and this and this because Rawson is actually I think exclusively 2D that's what he likes he doesn't do character design but if you give him a character he can do a lot of things with it so I actually and the challenge was he was actually quite far because he's he lives in Mombasa so when I contacted him, I thought at, at first that he's in Nairobi because he also lives in Nairobi. So I thought he was here so that we can meet up with him and I can share the files. Maybe it will be quite easy. But when I actually sent him the files, he was like, yo, I'm in Mombasa. So I don't know how that will work with you. And I told him that you just do it because it's scribbles. You can send me the project file. You don't have to export it for the scribbles, you can send me the project files. As long as there's no external plugin, I can work with that. And so, yeah, he did that. We, we cut it together with what Easy centers and um, we sent them back to Easy. Easy did a few things on it. Then that was kind of the final. And then you, uh, on your side, Adrian, you decided to put maybe the, the, the tags, I remember I put I put them the first time and then it wasn't quite right. So you had to maybe finesse it on your end, then send them to me because you had that idea. So maybe you had it quite planned out in your head a certain way. So yeah, that was kind of how the animation <laughs> came about and went to all these different people. So I can say that there's actually like how many people, Easy, Rawson, you and me who had a part in maybe touching up something in the video. Because when we put the animations, I came up with the idea of putting the text in 3D space. And there was an idea of putting a lot. I remember sharing that with you at some point during our video calls. There was an idea of putting all these GIFs of um, people like maybe something dancing and putting them in all these different 3D spaces around the video, but we just, decided to stick with the text and uh, I think that quite that looks kind of good as it is right now. No, I mean I I, I liked it actually because Adrian sent me the, the the link actually that had been put on YouTube. So yeah, so the first thing that caught my attention was the was the 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 text, the graphics and uh, I liked how um, I liked how it was done uh, to, to, to incorporate, you know, just the 3D space and not, basically not the normal way you'd expect graphics to be done in a video. Yeah. So for me, in fact, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, uh, I feel like, you know, even going forward, um, like this is how, you know, people like should be working because what it, what it has made me realize is that there's a, uh, I think there's a very strong point in having different people who uh, are all exceptional in particular things and then 
uh, everyone coming together and then putting their input uh, makes the whole thing just looks really, really, it becomes unexpected. Unlike you have maybe one person or just two people who are trying to just work through an overload of achieving everything. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I agree. It's great to bring experts together and have, have them input their expertise. So, yeah, so we've been joined by Naitiemu as well, who, who was art directing on this project. So she'll talk us, she was in the background before, but she'll talk us through a bit about that. But how, how, how has working with uh, a creative director and an art director impacted uh, your work within the project? Okay, maybe I can take that first. Uh, I think for me, um, I have worked with an art director and creative director before. Uh, of course, in different projects, not necessarily like this kind of a project. Yeah, and I think for this particular one, uh, again, I think it was a matter of, because, you know, this was new for me in terms of, uh, in terms of, as I said, I've never done uh, animations for a music video before like the principles of art and design, you know, remain the same, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, how, for example, you would apply one principle uh, on a specific project would be the same way you tackle it on another. Yeah, so I think for me, this was, because uh, uh, every project that I, I am, um, uh, I'm doing with people uh, and whenever there's either an art director or a creative director or both involved, I'm always looking at uh, an opportunity not just to uh, share my skills into making the project a success, but I'm looking at also what can I be able to learn in the process, you know? So uh, that's, that's what I was looking at. I was just looking at uh, yeah, what I can be able to learn in the process from, from you, from Rango, from everyone, uh, because there's always an opportunity to learn. Like we never, we never arrive per se, <laughs> uh, or rather, I I never I don't believe in arriving myself. So I believe there's always an opportunity to to learn something new. So yeah, so for me, that's that's how my experience was. Art direction. Yeah, so from your perspective, how did the art direction and creative direction of the, the project imp impact your part of it? Um, well, I, I think um, in terms of the art direction, it, it made it um, in that we had to, it gave us a, a way that we, <laughs> that we sort of had to follow because in a sense, we for the video we had to showcase everything that happened during the week for the event, and uh, for you coming in as a creative director, you knew exactly where you wanted the camera, what time, at what point. You you because you knew what you wanted us to showcase, and um, uh, the end goal was actually to showcase the the, the court, which was like the bigger part of the project which happened throughout the whole week and uh, to, uh, for, for that I think that it kind of gave us like a bearing of where to begin and where to end in terms of video. Thanks for that. So uh, I wanted to ask my Tiamo on her part in the art direction and what, what the process was throughout. Uh. Um, well, for me, uh, first, I just love to work with artists because I'm an artist anyway. It's so much fun to always work with artists. So I remember when the idea of Labeled Human came out and I was really excited for it because um, the idea of working with the community was quite it's something that we always want to do. It's something that I feel is impactful. If we have something we can work together as a community. All of a sudden we're like, oh, there are so many people we can work together with and we can learn too much with. And we met with the people who turned up on, on the Monday. 
Clef and Bandana are already there, so that was really much fun. They're already there jamming. Like, uh, I, I met them already there with their guitar. I mean, continue jamming because today is about jam session. Finoche there. I've been jamming to your music way earlier, and it's so nice to meet you finally in person. After this, I just allowed them to, to go on with the flow because uh, the next time Bakita, Bakita showed up, and Finoche and... Uh, and Clef and Bandana, now the whole team came together the next day and they were jamming together some more. I just, I, I let them actually, and I wanted them to just interact together and have a flow of what they can come up with. And that's how it happened. Within no time, they were like, hey guys, we already have the, the music ready. We have the song written out. And I listened to it and believe me, I was shocked. I was like, how did you guys come up with this? thing in that short period you know like I was shocked because these guys just they were just jamming and we were just label human capable of change I think I cried that day when I when I had them singing that song because I was stunned you know how do you just come up with this beautiful music in such a short period to be honest Finoche uh, did a great job in also just trying to to what to adapt to a new style because he's used to hip hop you know in production he's used to hip hop but this time it was really more softer and the, those guys worked together again and the next time I was hearing the track I was more mind blown I swear yeah I was uh, actually we've got the jam session or part of the jam session captured as well by Clef and Bandana but it was amazing to hear it. I think I probably uh, felt like shedding a tear too when I first heard that track. Oh yeah. <laughs> even before we saw the video. Then, then once the video came on top, that was another layer of ecstasy, I thought, and, and just amazing creative output. And then the animations on top of that are just oh, another man. thing. Yeah. So it, it's just like these, these layers of stuff that have been coming on top of each other now that it's... Uh, finally, finally finished. It looks looks really amazing. Yeah, yeah, I remember when I first saw the animations, and I was just like so blown with the oh man, easy. That was really cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. All these works have just really blown my mind. Yeah, it's not like animations like this haven't been done before, but it's kind of spotting what works and. Uh, just using it to, like, like Rango said, you know, we had a lot of ideas and it's using this effect in the right way so that it's tastefully done, so that it's not over the top as well, because we were trying to convey a lot of different messages with this, right, right weren't we? We were trying to convey that where we are, we were trying to show all the different people that are involved, we were trying to show, to kind of give as much hype to everyone as possible. Yeah, I was I was really impressed by how you you fused in your style, the hip hop style that you had, with the jazz style that the Cliff and Banana introduced into the group, and it was amazing. Yeah, can you tell us, Rango, about the technicalities of shooting the video, the chat, like you know what you shot on, and then actually how how um you know if there are any difficulties with the equipment or if you had to get to the equipment to work for you in any particular way because if i know for example we had a lot of dark and light areas that the dynamic range was jumping all yeah. over the place yeah <laughs> um so in terms of that we 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 thought at, at first um I, I remember you coming with the idea of shooting on an osmo but then um uh, I came to you and pitched to you and said, um, since we, we want something for a long term, um, let's actually get some, a, a, a good camera which can shoot really cinematic scope kind of mm. range. And for that, we got uh, a pocket. And um, since the, the course was actually like, there was stairs here, there were like, you had to go somewhere dark inside some, uh, some places. Um, that was actually the main challenge in terms of uh, the part where this drastic light change. And for that, because I remember the first time we, we had rigged the, the setup, we were using a gimbal and a camera. And then we set up so that 
the focus, the, the, the focus um, puller to be at the focus ring. And then we did like two takes with that. And then when we did the first take, what we were doing um, for the first three takes, there was someone who was always sort of like near the camera at any given time so that when we go to somewhere where the light is changing, they will change the, the ring themselves. And then um, the, the AC, the guy, the guy I had with who was like handling the camera for me, he came up with this idea. He told me, since we're not focusing that much, and there's always someone who is at a certain range of the camera, which is always in focus. Let's do this. Let's change the from focus and put it in aperture. And that way we'll have control and um, we'll be able to control the aperture ring without someone being close to you. So we had to maybe like, we, we closed down the, the ring a bit to get a bit of um, range for us. So for the artists, I told them that keep about uh, an arm's length away from the camera at any given time. Don't be this close to the camera because for the first takes, if we, uh, we did like a good 10 takes for that, for the video. And this, I think I still have all of them somewhere, but we did like a whole 10 takes of that. And then for the first ones, they were allowed to come this close to the camera because they were, they were to interact with the camera in any way they want. And then after the first five takes, we were like, okay, um, let's do this. Let the camera be like someone you're showing the event to. Let me be like a guest because anyone who will maybe see it, um, I wanted to, them to feel like they were not, if they weren't in the event, you were showing them in, you're ushering them in. And um, for that day, we changed a lot of things actually because for the first day, the previous day when we did the practice runs, there was, there was this part where we're going into the tunnel and they're following us with the, with the dancers. For that, we, may, we, we did uh, the first day was supposed to run. They were supposed to run into the tunnel and I was going behind them, just running with them inside the tunnel. And then when you get to the end of the tunnel where they're shaking hands and stuff, we, we, we turn and then they follow me into, the, into the, the main hall where I will follow them. And then when I get to Bakita, she follows me, but we changed on the last day because of one, um, like I said, there wasn't a big crowd, like we wanted it to, to be. So we had to like, for the first whole part, it was like, follow me, follow me, follow me all the way to the, to the, to the hall where I follow them in. And then when they get out of the hall, they follow me sort of going down. And <laughs> for one of the places where I feel like there was a big challenge was the stairs. <laughs> because there was, there it's, it's where actually Fino she made like, like, I can say like a cameo <laughs> on the video, on the take which we were supposed to go with. You can see Fino she, and we actually decided it's okay because he's part of the of the the of the video the, the making of the video so we decided it's okay let him we can use this take because if anyone asks who's that he's carrying a speaker he's the producer of the video there was that and um, at the bottom where we we take Caleb's verse I remember we bumped a bit <laughs> you remember that Adrian yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah we we we, we, we yeah, we sort of bumped the camera a bit and that was like one of the only mistakes we made in that take. And we were like, because everything else works and at some point it, it was very much bothering me and I tried a few things to maybe hide it and stuff and you were like, you know what, it's, it's okay for, for us to have a few hiccups here and there because it's, it's actually part of the video. You get it's part of the experience of making the video. Yeah. So we actually embraced those few things that we thought were maybe like hiccups and um, we went with it and I kind of like how it came out actually. Yeah. Yeah, so, so do I actually. The, 
Well, I think that the last take that we did was just too clinical and something about it just it wasn't, we were too prepared for it. There were a lot of things that we tried, yeah, to, exactly. tried to adjust and we just didn't like it as much. Uh, most people will think that whichever, what we went with was like the last take and the perfect take, but this was the second last take we went with, yeah. which was supposed to get people hyped for the final take, which was absolutely smooth from start to end because everyone was prepared and stuff and that i think that's kind of why we didn't go with it because everyone was looks prepared and it wasn't how we intended for it to look with the people on board and stuff because we wanted people to maybe feel like it's free be free with how we want it to be <laughs> and yeah. um yeah, i think that was kind of it yeah totally what about the lens what lens did you choose by the way i shot on a 16 mil millimeter mm -hmm. um, it was a rocking on lens um, those kind of the intermediate or uh, cinema lenses so we didn't actually use any filters on that day we decided that let, let it look as natural as possible because for the first part, I really wanted to use like where we are outside. I thought that we, we would use because you remember when I, I told you that instead of changing the aperture, in, we thought we put a neutral density lens on it, filter, sorry, so that we can anytime going into the tunnel, we change the yeah the the levels. But we thought we saw that it would be tedious because the whole when we measure the whole. Um, distance of us going around till the court it was supposed to be five minutes mm. five minutes run with how many light changes so the light will change approximately five times mm. so the first time uh, the the gaffer my gaffer was like um, you you have to decide will should we go under the sun or should we have to go when the sun is not there and um, on that day it was actually quite right outside anytime when, when before we reach the court during that five minutes we weren't sure how the cloud cover would look like so we decided let's go with the sun and when because today it's quite sunny when we get down there even if it covers a bit more majority of the video will be um, sunlit it would be under so that's that was kind of the decision going into that it was good, yeah. The, the colors were perfect, the sun was perfect. Uh, and we realized along, along with that that you shouldn't paint a basketball court that's outdoors bright white when you're on the equator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, funny thing that actually played to our advantage, really. The funny thing that the, the court played to an advantage because it bounced the light yeah, for the video. But for the, I think for the players that were complaining, it was too bright for them. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to keep adding the art once, uh, once well, hopefully there are yeah. no players there right now anyway. Hopefully they're socially distancing. <laughs> yeah. But we will yeah, add for I, the players. The only people who are there right now is... <laughs> yeah. Once we can finish the court, it'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, the part of like cella, you know, the mural, yeah. Um, everything really contributed, the artworks in the background. Uh, and as we walked through, you know, we got to kind of show exhibits from Nairobi Design Week in the exhibition hall as well. So what were the kind of changes that you made between the, the first version you shared and then the one after we added Bakita's vocal and the violins? So on the first version, I just used the, I used the keys, I used the drum kits, and a bass, bass guitar. And what I added on the second version was some little bit of violins and Bakita added some layer vocals, also Cliff and Bandana to vibe with during the last parts of the song from, I think it was from the fourth minute to the fifth minute. So that's what I added on the second version. And how was the experience of like multiple recording sessions, right? You've had Okay, to, to me, yeah. To me, when I when I make music, let me just speak as an artist and as a producer who produces his own songs. So I, I like 
making my my art my art so simple like an i can just use maybe rods rods piano a lead guitar uh, then drum kits uh, a bass guitar and um, maybe a sax only that mm. so on this one um i used many instruments you know so it was it was a good experience and also a challenging one because i've never done that so you said it was the first experience of working with live instrument recording for a music producer as a first time experience how did that change your approach uh like like i usually tell you um i learned music production via youtube i never went to a music school to play the piano the guitar or anything else so i just download plugins from the internet and uh, i use fl studio which is a uh, good software for beginners i started producing music in 2017 so i just play with the chords i don't know the chords like the theory of music well but you know i have a good i have a good ear i can know this sounds jazzy i can know this sounds solely this sounds hip hop this sounds trap and all that so it was a good experience and i'm planning after i'm done with school of which it's this june i'm going to start music classes like to play in the piano guitar or the bass like i need to know because you know i'll address more challenges in the future like the one you did to me you know <laughs> and i need to prepare myself <laughs> so izzy how has your how has your musical background influenced your visual uh, art Wow, it's actually uh, inf- influenced uh, me a lot actually than I thought it would uh, because I remember the first time like when I started creating videos uh, I was just concerned about or rather I was more involved in the visual bit of it and then as time went by I was now getting excited by because I was feeling like fine I I I I can have a nice visual but then uh as I was learning as I was, as I was learning the the art of creating videos then of course one of the things I was learning was for example if you shoot a video let's say it's a film you shot or it's a short film or it's just a video uh how important it is to also ensure that the kind of music that you use the sound effects the soundtracks that you use in the video like they have to make sense with the video like you can't just pick any music for example uh or and just put it on you know on a video so as i was learning that so i learned that and then i moved to the next step which was now learning how to basically uh merge the visuals uh with the sound um and and now i was getting more specific because because now i have you know the little knowledge uh that i have as far as music is concerned uh like finocho was saying i also have uh i believe i have a good ear and that's how even i was i've been able to learn like the music instruments that you know i've been able to play i've learned by by ear i've also never been to like a music school i've never even done a youtube uh, uh tutorial as far as music uh instruments is concerned it's always been learning by ear where i listen to a track i listen to a live music or listen to someone playing and then if i have the instrument i will try and mimic what i have had being played so then uh i basically i think i've been learning basically how to have a sensitive ear as 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 much as learning how to have uh, a sensitive eye and then merging merging the two so when i see a, when i when i have this kind of visual then i'm thinking okay so what kind of what kind of sound will will work well with this and somehow i, I can't really explain it but but somehow if i pick a sound and i put it on a specific visual and i look at it if it's wrong for me it's just wrong it just feels wrong it doesn't feel like it's it's blending i just know i can't really know how but i just know and then i'll keep trying i'll keep trying at some point maybe 
uh, in fact, I was talking to a friend of mine about two weeks ago. He's a music producer. He's done sound engineering for, for a while. And we were having a conversation because I needed to get from him advice on like uh, what softwares maybe that are out there that I can use for different things. Because the next thing I was, I was looking at doing uh, or rather I'm, I've been trying to figure out is how I can now make my own sound. And so I don't have to depend on soundtracks or whatever, but like, because sometimes I have specific things that I have in my mind that I'm thinking, I wish this could work out. I wish I could get this kind of sound and I'm not able to get that specific sound. So, but if I know uh, I have some nitty gritty uh, or small um, knowledge about uh, a software here or a software here, whether it's FL Studio or it's Logic Pro, then I'm able to know if, for example, I can even get samples uh, on the internet and then make my own sound that I want, you know? Mm. Yeah, so, so that's, that's the much influence that, you know, my, my music background has had on my visuals. It's been a great, great influence, so yeah. Audio is really important. Audio is really important in the movies you watch, in the adverts you watch, in, you know, everyone recognizes that Netflix audio logo because it bugs them every day of the week on YouTube. But at least they know that it's Netflix and they're subconsciously aware. Um, and it's not annoy annoying enough to uh, drive us away. So it's, uh, it, it's about having the right balance for something, uh, even a small interaction like that, that can change, right? We've just been working on the, the animation for this show and to create that audio logo and then to create the animation to have everything balanced so it doesn't feel too intense so it doesn't feel like you're um giving people too much of an introduction to something that deserves to be quite simple as well have, have finish have you ever taken visual art and have you ever taken visual art and created music from that been inspired by it that way or, or anything visual in fact to be honest, anything concerning visual, uh, I haven't taken <laughs> like any action yet because um, I prefer learning first. Yeah, you, you so, have some cool photos though. You have like you have a good, you know. There's there's some good images of you in the magazines I saw and stuff. Um, so you've got um, like a so the taste is you know you've got a creative taste there that comes across in in more than just your music it comes across in your writing it comes across in your uh in your visuals so who are the artists who have influenced you uh the first one you know him it's nas like i look up to nas you know but i can't do exactly what he does i need to come up and you know build my own my own road my own road like you know i, I learned from him and uh, build my own road. I look up to Nas, Q-Tip, Jay Dilla. You see, these are the old school hip hop producers and pioneers. I mean, the legends, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way I, 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 I don't like the way people usually say, when you rap in English, you are a wannabe. You know, hip hop is universal. It's not limited to any person. I'm a hip hop artist. And for real, to be honest, I don't give, <laughs> let me not say it. <laughs> like, the way people, let me say, the, the way people, you know, criticize artists who are trying to, you know, show the world their art, it's not really good and it's not really necessary, to be honest. As for me, I'm doing, I'm not doing Kenyan hip hop. I'm doing the universal hip hop because that's where I've been learning from, you know, the stories from the ruler, you know, Creek, Nas, you know, I've been just reading the poems, their stories, and getting influence from there. So I'm trying to build my own road from their stories. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and getting influences from their stories as Finoche, not as Finoche Nas, just as Finoche. Of course. So, how, mm. so tell me about one of your projects and how Finoche comes through in that. Um, uh, this this project I did, it's called Her Love. Uh, I featured Liana, Liana and Moods from France. She's a dope artist. You know, I just I just DM'd her, talked to her, thought I have this nice project. You know, can you put 
a voice here and she told me yeah sure so the project was talking about hip hop like how i have faith in hip hop and how hip hop is the foundation of the youth actually when you look back in the 19 in the 90s and 80s even in kenya hip hop was a was a way of speaking to the youth and in kenya to be honest people really don't um, value hip hop as much as let me say other countries do you know like getting the likes of common being invited to the white house to perform to the president that's where i want to see the kenyan hip hop going man but in kenya let, let me let me let me just be frank you know there are these songs that to be honest i don't really like because all the time it's all about you know sex sex you know all these dirty stuff and all that i really don't like that because i believe we can we can do more than that like it's time we empower women not put, putting women on tv like showing you know nudity and all that it's time we empower also women you know so with the educational background that i have and also growing up in an environment where i've seen vices thrown in the society like i just took a turn of doing something positive to talk like to talk life in my music rather than talking of things that i don't possess you know i want to talk about unemployment poverty depression you know all that yeah that's why we, that's why we did label human a positive stuff man <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly it's yeah actually it's good to you mention you um you know positive female imagery because it seems that that comes through in your in your music have you got female role models that you, that particularly guide your direction yeah erica badu lorin hill you know the old school i'm an old school fanatic and i'm influenced mostly by old school artists erica badu queen latifa we got sisi sagini in kenya we got sage in kenya you know wangari mm-hmm. madai like i'm influenced by musicians you know some of the politicians poets mm, with the things they do you know i just look up to them mm-hmm. and i and also besides me doing music i shared with you this story that in future i want to come up with my own organization you know like to to help africa tackle poverty mm. also this crime crime cases this vices the poor sanitation and all that yeah like i'm just looking up to people like common the way i told you common really inspires me a lot you know to an extent that the president calls you and tells you come to the white house i need you to perform for me that's where i want to see me man <laughs> in the next three or ten years being invited maybe in state house and told you know shake perform for us i'm not looking into being the mainstream in the mainstream you know like people talking about you know shape you know shape and all that i just want to impact people's lives positively that's what i want to do. and i want to share my story yeah i think you've noticed m- most of my songs they got stories and before i release my music at some point i usually send you ask you maybe what you feel and think about the music before i release that's what i usually do with my close friends i send them songs i ask i ask their opinion and i release i feel uh, privileged to have my whatsapp filled with amazing samples that i can i can check out yeah um, yeah. yeah and also besides on my on my produ- production side the way i sample let me say the way i sample songs this sound very different you can give me a sample maybe a loop i can sample it and make it look like i was the one who's playing mm-hmm. that's what i usually like when i get it i when i get the sample i really want to you know make it look like you know play this yeah yeah that's what i do you can get, you can give me a challenge maybe and by the end of the day or maybe tomorrow something i'll give you something different <laughs> we'll have many challenges <laughs> we'll have many challenges i'm sure <laughs> yeah. yeah actually speaking of like challenges we want to set a challenge as well don't we as a remix contest for mm. this song 
What what are your what are your guiding notes for the people that are gonna be remixing this, gonna take it up? Um, we can maybe we can put the, the we can we can give the producers the stems. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, so we'll give them the stems. Yeah, and uh, give them the stems. And also, you you can you can open up a TikTok account uh -huh. of Nairobi Design Week. Yeah, because of real life people are trending mostly TikTok and this uh, this kit this kit. Yeah, I think it's this kit. People are training there. Maybe. Put a uh, put a little promotion, you know, to get uh -huh. to people, and uh -huh. they'll start their challenges and all that. With the hashtag labeled human. Labeled human. Yes, and labeled human challenge is the plan, isn't it? So that's what yeah, we'll yeah. Have to, yes, we'll have to get, and that's the idea to let people interact with this on every level that they want or they can. So for yeah, the yeah. DJs and the remixers and the producers, are releasing the stems. We're going to, you know, people, nothing's going to stop people from, uh, you know, downloading the track, however they get it. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, and, and then doing their own, you know, not, um, encouraging people to do video remixes of their own video, yeah. of their community. And, mm -hmm. and then um, there was another way I know we had, we had the music, we had the, the video, and then the labeled human monologues as well. So the label mm. human monologues to have, you know, people just saying what they've been labeled, you know? Yeah. Um, mm. Because we've all shared, shared our labels, but it's encouraging other people who are coming. Mm. So how has, Naitiam, uh, how has like the, the labeled human campaign influenced the, the work that you're doing? Because it seems that you talk about humanity and humans a lot anyway throughout, throughout the work. Yeah. So how has that influenced what you're doing? For me, um, first working in this project is in line with my thought process because I talk about mental health awareness and this uh, labeled human project was a way for expression. I felt like um, we all carry so many labels within our society and as time goes by, it weighs us down. And for me, this was a release more like a release project in my art also. And then coming together with all these different artists and having to understand your points of views of how to, to, to carry this project together was also something that made me see art from a bigger angle, you know? Like even with the, uh, working with the animations and uh, the video, the, the one shot video angle that we took, for the labeled human was something quite unique and the energy you know when the dancers came together uh mm. and met with the musician and there was that flow of that energy as they're moving around the compound and you can see in the face that it's all them of them coming together that brings about the light to this project you know and that's the importance of it all, the community, bringing all of us together. So, for example, in my art, um, I've I'm learning new skills, like I've learned how to animate. I didn't know how to much of animation before the Labeled Human Project, but with the Labeled Human Project, I've been working more with putting things together and coming up with stories that are from, from all these different shoots that we're taking. And, it's really helped me improve in my animation skills and just seeing the process. I feel for me, what has been really important in my growth is looking at all these different artists coming together to create something so beautiful. So to me, that has stood out. Mm. Just all of us bringing our art together and making it so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's the one thing about this is clearly there are um, again coming back to you know working with people who are exceptional because when you look at something like the music video what people will see is actually say say she is yeah. and antoinette the dancers they are the ones who are kind of leading the the group throughout the music video so <clears throat> and then you've got clef and bandana who you know contributed well you know the to a writing of the song and to composing of the song. And then you've got um, 
everyone kind of coming in with with their own piece. So that's really nice. Um, Rango, I wanted to ask you, we haven't had the opportunity about your past projects and so on. So just like Finish that you've done a lot of hip hop work and we, we've got a more of a pop song here. So how has some of what you've learned been brought into this project? Yes, I've, I've actually been able to work on a lot of video, video music videos in general, because um, those are like the, the main thing I do actually, because I happen to work with one of the biggest offices in Kenya, which works for music videos purely. And um, from that, we, I, I sort of got a few things uh, and learned a few things from those sets that we've been in. And um, one of the things that I actually learned was <laughs> if you believe in an idea quite so much, go with it no matter what. And that's what actually made me be comfortable with doing the wanting, regardless of of, uh, of people not being there and, uh, and the few challenges we might have had. Because I, I knew that we can still make it work and you can still make it look really magnificent, which we did. And because I remember the, the, the one thing that made me, gave me confidence was how much everyone else was quite involved in this. At first, when during in the set, I didn't know Finoche was the <laughs> was the producer of the music. I remember, but he kept on talking to me. And I was like, <laughs> always like, who's this guy? Who's this guy? He always, <laughs> wow. He's just always here next to me, talking to me. Yeah, you know. I didn't know. I actually came to know he was the <laughs> producer after the that the same day, right? But after we shot, when he came to to the office, you remember Finoche when you. <laughs> when you came in and you were like, oh yeah, I'm the producer actually. And I was like, oh really? Ah, so uh, we talked we'll for a while. We have to make sure in future, we do the introduction before the shoot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so that was kind of it. Um, for, for the most part, the project I worked on, most of them have been um, hip hop and stuff, but for the, for the best, the better part of it was, is that, um, it's been almost purely music videos for like 80% of my work, music videos that's been it. So it's been, it, it, it kind of gave me an upper hand coming into this because I, I kind of knew what to expect and how to handle a music video because generally music videos are just feel free, which was kind of what this video had to look like. Mm -hmm. It had to look fun feel free in the fun kind of way. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we actually kind of nailed it to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It was, a lot, it was a lot of fun. We've got behind the scenes footage as well, fortunately. Yeah. 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 It's interesting to see how a music video yeah. looks behind the scenes compared to in front of the camera. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we, we also have the, the one thing um, behind the scene. There's someone who took a one thing behind the scene video. Oh really? Used. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a guy. He, he also had a gimbal and a camera. So if ah. not, it was someone who it, so he knew Sogalo. Yeah, yeah. It, it can't have been Sogalo because he's in the video. It was Sogalo's yeah, camera. Ah, it was Sogalo's camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he actually that guy took the one take with me. The the, right. the take that in the video. He took the last two takes. The the one that we didn't go with and this one that we went with. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he has both of them in one right. take also. <laughs> yeah, so find right. find them. Yeah, beyond music videos, you've done work that's featured local creatives and artists, right? That was more interview format and features. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Those those were kind of the early works that I I did before actually doing music videos. And, um those actually were quite insightful in, in terms of I came to understand artists and stuff because myself, I'm also, me and ITM actually we met in painting, in the process of painting and doing that. So I'm an artist first, 
before doing music because I would do murals sometimes, I would paint, draw and stuff. So that was kind of because uh, for Nairobi design, it's, it's an art thing. So me coming into it with that background was quite insightful and helpful. Yeah. Mm. Have you got any final thoughts before we uh, so finish the video? I can just say, I, I hope people appreciate the project as much as we we did. They love it as much as we did because um, we kind of gave it the best we could. Play. Uh. Yeah. 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 Whoa! Yeah. Produced by <laughs> Chase easy asses, and will I take the name? I was say one at Aja. What you call the name of this guy baking stanzas? Something they do freely, cause labels are free, but labels ain't deep enough to be who you be. So, Ataka, Waitika, Majina, Wana Ita, you don't need the label to be, we're all human. Fight to ginger, native deep, renegade, never been afraid. Dragon fire my breath, melt away the fears, dies away the fear, for rises off the spear. A symbol for hope, don't despair, rise your head up high. To the sky with gaze and follow in the light of a star as I shine this path. Labeled human. At the end of the day, we'll just live with you and learn from our mistakes. Keep up with our change. At the end of the day, we'll just live with you and learn from our mistakes. Keep up with our change. To that song I'm Song I'm ready. Oh, tonight, 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 tonight,
You can check out the label Human Song on Spotify, Apple Music, and wherever you listen to your music on YouTube.